been awarded here for uh, outstanding contribution to music. Yeah, man. Pretty, pretty amazing. Sending my walking stick or something. I thought it was, uh, yeah. I, I can't remember, I thought it was worded a different way, um, lifetime achievement. I said, lifetime achievement, man, come on. <laughs> Maybe wait, give it another decade if I'm still around then. But yeah, it's a great, yeah, I'm honored to be here. Great award, fantastic. And um, I, I'll never forget being here 20 years ago with my wife when I got an award for a drugs don't work. So yeah, yeah. I put a hole in the original one trying to put a nail in. I'll never do that again. I'm sorry, the Ivers. <laughs> but it is a weighty award. I don't know if you've ever held an Ivor Novello. Yeah, it's well, probably yeah, yeah, the it's most. Heavy, yeah, yeah. It's the most aesthetically pleasing and also weighty award I think out there. So yeah, you're, there's you're, another reason to win one. You're in good I got, company. I like uh, symmetry as well, so I've got two now, so that's cool. Excellent. Where'd you keep them? Um, I like different rooms, move it around. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a bit like maybe I'm never going to get it. I can't see the end of time I get an Oscar, but the Ivor Novello is like that. It's got that kind of aesthetic appeal, you know. It's like, Absolutely. Oh, you know, certainly for someone who, you know, isn't trained in music or, like I've said in other interviews, not connected to the music industry. Me and my band, we came through different avenues and then I developed as a songwriter independently on my own. And, you know, that journey was quite quick, but it didn't come from any sense of grounding in classical training. And I think that's a new lesson for anyone out there who's just starting, whether whatever instrument you're starting is that you really are only a few steps away from doing something that could live forever, you know? As long as you can tap into yourself and don't have that fear that what your mates are going to think about it. So do you think you're on the, the best song right in form now? And Interesting, I'm creative at the moment and yeah, I'm very excited at the moment. But um, who's there to judge? I can't judge that. It goes, you know, it flows, it would be long after I'm gone or any individual artist that you can judge. And periods, periods in someone's work can be, you know, in 10, 20 years time, look back differently, you know? So I think it's all good, it's all good for the positive. What I want to do is redefine age has no bearing on the quality of anybody's work, you know, and same Johnny Cash proved that, I've said that earlier, with A Man Comes Around, it's one of the best songs he ever did, you know? So. Maybe the next part of my creativity will be about that. It's like, you know, how do you smash these paradigms that shouldn't exist anymore? Do you know what I mean? Same with songwriting. Songwriting used to be a kind of closed club, and uh, artists were written for. And yeah. you know, X amount of years ago, the four scousers changed that. You know what I mean? Is it harder to write songs as you get older, Richard? Um, because I don't know. People run out of steam. It's just they? got to be in that mindset potentially where that that conscious part of the mind isn't in your ear you know if you can still attain that position without all the feedback of life and all the build-up of all life and what it brings you've got, you've got a lot of enthusiasm when you're younger which maybe dissipates as you get older or, or I, don't I think know. it's a hunger and you're born with it it's like Sir Alex Ferguson in football you know ultimately he probably in his his hunger would have carried him on for another 10 years you know he wouldn't have stopped. You know, it's only physicality that will uh, stop me having that desire to explore music or perform to my fans and, and enjoy, you know, this gift that I've been given. Do you wake up with songs in your head and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely all the time. Totally, man. Uh, but not, you know, but still have barren beers, still have, you know, and insecurities. And like I said before, I'm aware that just as many people dislike me as like me, you know. And once you're comfortable with that as well, you're never going to please the whole world musically. Not, a, you know, it's very difficult to have those moments. Like you? What do they say then? What because that's just the yin and yang, the balance of life, you know what I mean? And, and now there were paid trolls back in the day, now people do it for fun, you know. So now that's a kick. To be negative is, is gives people a kick now, so you have to be, I'm talking more of a younger person starting out, being aware of and taking that on. Much easier to get someone else's work and say, oh, I'll sing that, blame him. You know, no one to blame, so you take on that responsibility, you better believe you're taking on all that. So you have to learn to take that, all that away from you, your creative head. What about on a live platform? You still enjoying yeah. that as much as... Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, better than ever, yeah, because my voice got better. A much stronger voice now. 
don't know how to. I'm sound like a child back then. Anyway, I've got I, I was going to say thanks. just very quickly, yeah. I know you are very good friends with Mr. Liam Gallagher. Mm. Have you heard the new album? Are you going to be on it? Doing a bit of collab no, work? Um, I know sometime in the future we definitely 100% intend to do songs together. Um, I don't believe I've got any songs in this record, but you know, I'm mean, just really excited about it. Excited for him. You know, he's a good friend of mine. You know, one of the few people that is on that level as a frontman with me. So, when have we get on well. Have you heard the album? What's it sounding like? I haven't heard it yet, no. I've not heard it. So he's keeping it under wraps, keeping it to himself. But whatever it'll be, it'll be exciting and it'll be Liam and um, all these fans will be able to come out and see him play again. So it's all, it's all happy. It's positive at the moment. Everything is positive. Good luck to you. Uh, an old house, oh, you know, with terraces. Did you live in that, or a, I don't know, a Georgian house in Richmond, or a country house in Gloucester? Do you maybe, still have those? Maybe Vinci's Mercedes, or who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Which was the best investment? I mean, it's a word. Fucking, you know what I mean? Is that diamond? Yeah, these oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. They're bloody amazing. Yeah. Oh. yeah, so that's what they call me, Flashcroft. Richard Flashcroft in the sun when I bought my first house. Oh, really? Flashcroft, yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah. I was going to join as well. So yeah. Say congratulations. Yeah. And um, you said last year that um, you were planning to re like start a lawsuit against Adam Klein. Are you yeah. still planning to do that? Well, I don't. To a certain extent, I don't need to because Mick and Keith have signed over their publishing. Yeah. So, you know, but it was all part of starting this whole narrative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it was one of them things that I think if I'd just gone away and been quiet about it, then nobody would have said a damn thing. Now, luckily, last year I played with the Stones, and I think that obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think maybe some of their party were like, "Is he going to say anything?" No, of course not, because I knew it was never really a, a Rolling Stones and me problem. It was, there was a other third party. Now, Alan Klein's, Jody Klein, um, I got to thank him as well because he did take the call about all this that's been going on yeah. recently with. Uh, Nick and Keith signing over the song to me, so I got to thank him as well. So, really, it's like the other day I was driving around. I don't know if any of you have seen the biopic of Lenny Bruce, the comedian that Dustin Hoffman played. Lenny Bruce, it's worth seeing because Lenny Bruce, you know, the comedian, he basically used a lot of profanity on stage and then he got into a lot of legal issues. This is years ago, yeah, but those legal issues became part of his act until people became bored of his act because Lenny was obsessed with the fact that he couldn't swear on stage and etc. So Bittersweet Symphony is my Lenny Bruce and it's over, do you know what I mean? It's like finally over, like, thank God. Be, yeah. I can perform it, I can, <laughs> but you know, like I said to the lady earlier, you know, it's weird when every time you hear something it conjures positivity but negativity at the same time instantaneously for 21 yeah. years. So I'm now finally like it's great and it's it's restored my faith in like I said earlier there's a lot of lawyers at the moment listening to melodies with people going does that sound like the X let's sue them it's kind of restored my faith in humanity a little bit and Mick and Keith said no we didn't make that he made it there you go and you've got to this is a bit sweet a separate issue because it's a sample song but basically we've got to like live in a writing culture where you can tip a hat to your influences you know can you imagine being an author of novels and not being able to be influenced by another writer it'd be almost impossible to write and, and often the beauty is if you tip a hat i call it you reference someone as a you're saying, yeah, you're part of my thing. Just like Paul McCartney would tip a hat to Little Richard when he did his high falsetto ooze. It was Little Richard. Yeah. In and that it, world, you could never say the word love again, could you? Or write yeah, it. Exactly. exactly, yeah. So we're becoming so, um, what's the word? You can't, you see, it's hip hop. Like we used to do our hip hop, so Noel Gallagher's form of hip hop in a way is by ripping a riff off of it. But the irony is, is like, hey, check this out. This is a T Rex riff. But then I put this over it, and all the kids are loving it. This is back when Definitely Maybe came out. And that was fresh, man. There was something fresh about people think it's just being, uh, what's the word, retro or. It's not. It's hip hop. It's You, you tip a hat, you, you take a little bit of something you love, and hopefully you add. Now, if you're adding nothing to it, then it's just plagiarism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're adding and freshening it up or twisting it, that's what hip hop and rock and roll really have always been about, and that's what the Stones were about. You know, Stones can't go there, of course. 
they can't go anywhere near that because a lot of them riffs and stuff obviously were borrowed and taken and tipping our right off to the blues and the rhythm of blues plays. So it's all good. I'm all happy. Victories. Yeah. I will. Yeah. One last question. Yeah. Sure, mate. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for it. <laughs> If you had to sort of say, back, looking back across your career, yeah. one bit of luck, just a bit, a pure bit of luck that mm. thought, my God, that changed everything for me. That's what a good, good, good great question. Um, a bit of luck. It's probably just blagging into my sixth form college, really, with the, the lowest amount of grades possible, five GCSEs at C. I believe that was the absolute but for, bottom. For, for music, but that was lucky, yeah, because then that... Uh, allowed me to spend a little bit of time in an environment that was slightly different, do you know what I mean? There was more arty people there, there was people who were already into guitar, there was people who were already were more advanced than me, it was, it was an invite into... Oh, you into the scene? Yeah, because in a way, yeah, because it would have been a lot more difficult because I would have to go out and get a job and try and find someone to pay the bills, you know what I mean? And that time, I was lucky, gifted that time really to form a band and think about these things, listen to music, you know, we're just lucky really that some reason financially or whatever it turned out that I was could do a six you know, I got five C's. If I got four C's and a D, then my life would be different. You know what I mean? Without a doubt I wouldn't have met the people I met, the former members of the band and all that, you know what I mean? So yeah, lucky lucky that I got two answers right in a R E G C S E or something. I don't know what to do. Nice one, thanks a lot. Nice one, pleasure.